So this morning I am looking out over all these empty seats, and I see you sitting here this morning. And again to all of our guests, welcome. The church this morning is full of your presence and of your prayers. After being out this past week, going to the store and getting some meds that I needed and food, and going to the bank, I believe that this message this morning is very relevant to the times that we are living in today. So again this morning, as I did last week, I'm going to ask you to stand with me as I read God's Word, John 13, 34, and 35. Now, Jesus is about to leave the earth and go back to heaven, and he says, I give a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. And Father, in my mind's eye, I just see those people that I have missed here in the audience. They're here. And the guests that are here. Father, thank you for your love and grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Last week we were in the book of Genesis with the first question that man ever asked. And he asked to God, am I my brother's keeper? And I believe from Genesis, the beginning, to Revelation, the close of the Bible, God is telling us, yes, we are our brother's keepers. Because we are family in the idea that we are all flesh and blood, no matter our skin color or nationality or even belief, we are brothers and sisters in the flesh. Yet in the New Testament, God narrows that down and says that a believer is not only part of the family of man, but a believer is part of the family of God. That by faith we have come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and by that faith we have become part of his family. And in the 13th chapter of John, Jesus declares that the evidence of being a part of his family is that we love one another. Then, in the very next chapter, Jesus lets us know how serious he is about us loving one another. So I just want to read some verses where Jesus talks about this love that we are to have for one another. John 14, 50. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be, uh, will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Verse 23 and 24. Jesus said, and Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my word. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. What was the commandment that Jesus had just given his disciples and us? Simply, love one another. Jesus could have said, by this all men will know you are my disciples if you lead the most people to me. But that's not what he said. He could have said, by this, if you give enough of your time or enough of your money, people will know you are my disciples. No. The evidence was more substantial, more important. Now listen, more 
giving. When I give money, that is good. And when I give time, that is good. But giving of love is more gracious than all else. Because love means that I surrender myself to another's needs. I surrender myself to what someone else needs. And the greatest evidence of that is Jesus himself. He loved, he gave himself, and he gave his life on the cross for mankind that whosoever. Now, just think about it. Just next week will be Easter. And let us remember what Jesus did for us, and in turn, we are to love others. Now, for the next few moments, let us look at what Jesus was commanding, not asking his disciples to do. He wasn't making a suggestion that we love one another. He said, by this, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. The step up from his followers was his disciples. And he's saying, if you truly want to be my disciple, the evidence of that is loving one another. Some of you this morning may be thinking, sure, we are to love one another. I understand. Jesus calls for a higher standard of love. One based not on what we think about love, but what he showed to be love. The example of the Lord Himself. Believers face the dawning challenge of loving one another even as Jesus loved us. It, has, it takes work for me to love others in the way that Jesus loves me. Of course, to love like that is impossible apart from the transforming power of the new birth in Jesus. Paul says, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who gives, who, who was given to us, Romans 5, 5. The word love, perhaps, is the most misused word in the English language. I find it interesting that when God dissects love and tells us the formula of love, telling us what love truly is, how he starts off with that. In fact, it takes a whole chapter, or he gives a whole chapter, to let us test what we say by what we do. I look at 1 Corinthians 13, 4, in the great love chapter. And he starts off by saying, love is. This is what love is. And he mentions several things. But he starts off with an interesting word. And he says, love is patient. Patience is something I have had to work on most of my life. But it is interesting that the more you have a connection with someone, the more patient you can become with that person. So we need to develop, work on that connection, especially with the church family and be patient. Love, patience, being patient, long-suffering. One author put it, long The other day, I was in the store. Patience was in shorter supply than toilet paper. I smiled at myself, getting irritated, and then remembering I was going to preach Sunday about patience. It was like God tapped me on the shoulder and said, Roger, remember Patience. Love patience is the ability to 
to take uh, to be taken advantage of by a person and not get upset or angry. God's love is a love that is primarily concerned for the welfare of others, not itself. And it is much more willing to be taken advantage of than to take advantage. Almost daily we are told that we are living in difficult times. I don't think anyone needs to tell us that we are living in extraordinary times. The evidence is all around us. So many sick, so many dying. You know it is difficult times or unusual times, different times when sports stadiums are empty. And families are having to spend a great time together. And people are having to be patient or should be patient. Standing in line at the store the other day, a man in front of me turned to me and said, This could kill all of us. I responded back, The question is, are you ready to die? His patience ran out right then. Webster says a patience capacity of calm endurance, the capacity of being affliction with a bearing affliction with calmness, tolerance, understanding. I love this one best. Capacity of bearing delay. When we are in the store or somewhere, somewhere we don't like delay. Capacity of bearing delay. Who are we to be patient with? Some of you may not like this, but we are to be patient with our government. We are to be patient with our leaders. We are to even be patient with the people in the store. I found out a long time ago it is a lot easier to criticize when you don't have all the facts or when you're not responsible. I look at 2 Corinthians 6.6 6 and it says, In purity and knowledge in patience, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in gentle love. Let me repeat that. In purity, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in gentle love. So we are to love one another and we are to be patient with one another. The supreme example of patience, of course, is God himself. It is God's patient love that prevents the world from being destroyed. It is his patience that puts up with man. It is his patience and long-suffering that allows time for man to be saved. The world needs to see more patience from believers in the line at the grocery store in all that we do. Yet the world needs a great deal more than that. It needs God. It needs Jesus Christ. But the world does need people who can show, be kind, and more patient with those that are doing all they can and all they know to do. I'm afraid many Christians are not always very kind and patient as they ought to be. Since Adam and Eve first disobeyed God, God has been constantly wronged, rejected by those he made in his own image. Yet through the thousands of years, the eternal God has been patient. On the cross, Jesus could have called down 10,000 angels to come down and take him off the cross, but he was In closing, I ask you to be patient during these certain uh, uncertain
certain times. If you don't have everything you want, we'll get by. If you don't have everything you need, we'll survive. And remember, there are many positives during these times. A man told me the other day that really made me smile. He said he and his wife are normally so busy, they hardly see each other, but during these days that they are in the house together, they have found they really love one another. Now that God has our attention, let us be still and know that he is God. And God is getting his word out to a greater number of people than ever before. Now let me say that there is something you should never be patient about. And that's trusting Jesus Christ and giving your life to him. He has been very patient with you and this morning just pray and ask him to forgive you of your sins and believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Thank you for being with me this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let us love one another, be more patient with one another, and we will dismiss in prayer, and then Roger will come and bring our announcements. Father, we thank you for the patience that you've given us. You tell us that one of the fruits of the Spirit is so if we are saved, we have the Holy Spirit and we have patience. So may we use them. May we exercise patience. Father, may we love one another and care for one another. Now, Father, you tell us that it's not all the things that we do for you that show that we're your disciples. We need to do those things, but it is that love for one another. Now, Father, we thank you again in Jesus' name, the name above all names. Amen. Again, it's been so nice to uh, have you join us for our worship services. We do want to pass along a couple of announcements for you to be aware of as a church body. Uh, our activities have not all ceased. We are having some Bible study groups that are meeting called Zoom. Uh, some of you are also having classes through Facebook Live. Uh, we have tried to compile all of those classes and all those groups together on our website. So you can go to bandsickle.org and you can click on the coronavirus update to see all of the latest news that the church is doing uh, here for our church members and the community itself. So please check that out. We'll also try to include those on Facebook too. Also, we want to remind you that you can still give your tithes and offerings. Please uh, consider using our online giving platform, Givelify. You can see that on Facebook or also on bandsicle.org. There's also a link for that there. So please consider using those. We do want you to know that Easter is next weekend, and we are planning some special activities for that. Ms. Brandy's working in the children's ministry to put together a special at-home family uh, Easter outreach for you, and so that'll be something that the families can do. So look for more information that she'll be sharing. If you haven't already, check out the Vansicle Baptist Church Kids or Children's Ministry page. They've got special announcements and updates that they have there. Uh, as was mentioned this last week on Wednesday night, uh, and by the way, if you haven't heard, we have started a Wednesday night uh, announcement or devotional that we're doing with Brother Roger. And he shared this last Wednesday that we're going to be giving some special clues for his Easter character sermon that he's going to be doing. And the first person to guess correctly that, uh, that character, we are going to do something special to them. And so this morning we wanted to pass along two clues to you. Uh, the first clue is this character supported our Lord. That's the first clue. And the second clue this character, he saw how gentle our Lord is. So those are our clues to the character sermon. Please send us your guesses through 
uh, either text messages or you can leave them here in the comments section of this broadcast. But thank you again for joining us. We want to close in prayer and ask the Lord's blessing on you uh, as you continue your week together. Father, we thank you so much for your great love and thank you, God, for the opportunity that we have to worship you, God, as your church body. We pray, God, that you've been honored in all the homes that are represented here through this feed. God, we thank you that uh, you are faithful, God, that you can bring good out of even the darkest of situations. And God, as we've heard this morning, we pray, God, that you would help us to be patient, uh, God, as we strive to love one another and, uh, and show the world what true believers look like. God, that's what your word reminds us, that we will be known as your believers, as your disciples, by our love for one another. So help us, God, to do a good job as a church, as we love one another, as we love this community. Now give us that patience as we've heard this morning. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name.